In just four days, we've made almost an entirely functional SaaS app with AI and Claude code. And in this video, we're gonna be adding a full design system and creating a front-end design agent in the Playwright MCP to let front-end design, debugging, and testing just be done entirely on its own. And we're gonna walk through what we built in the last day. Hey, I'm Craig Hewitt, welcome back to 100 Days of AI. This is our live build project where we're building Linkberry. Linkberry is the ultimate LinkedIn content machine for you as a thought leader, linkberry.ai. If you wanna check it out, join the waitlist. Link is in the description below. Since yesterday, we have been very busy. Actually, our friend Claude Code <laughs> has been very busy. I'm gonna pull up our task list here in Cursor. Uh, and so just to, for kind of baselining, Cursor is an application where you write code and run things like the terminal, which is where Claude Code lives. So Cursor is an application on my computer. Claude Code is an AI tool that lets me do coding automatically without having to know a whole bunch of stuff about code. But in the last day, we completed basically the guts of the application. Uh, so we created the text interview UI. We created the audio interview. We have a bug there that we're gonna debug in the live working session. And just if you have missed the last couple of videos, we have two formats here on the channel. One recap video like this, where I walk through what we did the previous day, what we're gonna do the next day. And then in a separate video, which is linked below, it's the only place it's available. It's, there's an unlisted uh, YouTube video link below where I actually go through the work of building this application. So if you wanna see how the sausage is made, links in the description below for me to go forward from today uh, and build this thing out, okay? so. We built the audio interview so you can talk to this application that will take the words that you use and your tone and your language and the, the content of what you say and create amazing LinkedIn posts for you. Built this, but it has a bug. So we're gonna debug that today. And then it creates content for you. So you give it a bunch of context and input and it creates a bunch of amazing LinkedIn posts. And the goal here is just to make LinkedIn not suck because LinkedIn kind of sucks sometimes. And if you come from like Twitter or Instagram, you might be like, oh my gosh, LinkedIn is so cringe we're on a mission to change that. It's actually kind of like part of our manifesto is like LinkedIn is a really amazing platform. I like it quite a bit, but the content and maybe some of the people there suck. And we're gonna change that. We're gonna be the thought leaders. We're gonna be the, the movement that changes this back to LinkedIn being a cool place to go. Um, much like you might enjoy, you know, Twitter or Instagram. Okay, so we're creating posts. Uh, and this is in phase two of the project. Phase three is creating the dashboard, and I'll just walk through all this in just a second. Uh, and then phase four is navigation. And this is where we start having some front end bugs. So the UI uh, design system, the MCP server of the Playwright MCP server uh, are gonna, and the agent that we're gonna create for this are gonna completely solve this for us. Uh, and then testing, we haven't gotten to testing yet. So that's where we are. Let's look at the application and kind of see what is happening. Okay, and here's what we have so far. So we have a dashboard which has a bunch of draft ideas for us. Uh, we can edit these drafts. Uh, so this is this is this is bad, right? So the first goal is like just get it working, uh, and then get it good, and then have it be performant. That's kind of the three steps. Uh, and so we have the text here. We have the preview uh, with the 210 character cutoff that LinkedIn has. Uh, so this is like what it will look like on LinkedIn. This is pretty cool. You can copy or uh, delete these. And you can create a new interview. And an interview is where you give the context and the content for the AI to then repurpose into good uh, posts. You might notice that this has navigation, whereas the dashboard page does not have navigation. So this is something that hopefully the playwright and our agent, uh, front end agent picks up. Uh, and so you can start a new interview here and it will give you the option to input either text or audio. So audio is definitely a bug and we have to fix that. And we'll do that in just a second. But the AI is asking us questions. What is the single most impactful trend you've observed in your industry recently? And you can type something in here, uh, or you can do a voice note to give a whole ton of context. And I think this is really where people are gonna use it. Uh, but there's a bug here and this doesn't work for some reason. So we're gonna see what's going on here and why this doesn't work. So, but this just doesn't work, right? Um, so I don't know why this doesn't work, but we're gonna play around with it. Uh, and so from there, if we finish the interview, just with our hamburgers piece of input, it will create a LinkedIn post for us. It's probably not gonna be a very good LinkedIn post because it doesn't know anything about us, uh, but that's what it's going to do here. So that's where we are. So the few things I wanna to do today, first of all, I wanna clean up the front end and create our agent because I think that's gonna let us do uh, a lot more work and not have to worry about the front end as much. 
But before we do that, I want to debug this issue with the audio uh, because that's not cool that it doesn't work. So pull up this, take a screenshot and go over to Claude Code and ask it what is going on with this. So we're in cursor here in Claude Code. Oh, we were working on this yesterday. So we have uh, LinkedIn social auth. It's not quite working. I have to do some stuff in LinkedIn. So I'm just going to clear this, start a new context window because this is just like a thing uh, where, oh, I should do slash clear. Clear is all the context, so we're not sending a whole bunch of information to Anthropic for stuff we don't need. Okay, so I'm just going to say we have a bug where uh, the AI is not being transcribed. Please help me identify the root cause of this. I'm attaching a screenshot from the application with the error message. Um, and let's go take the screenshot again. Let's see what this has to say. We can also come over here, which is just another terminal window. Oh, this should be where the application's running. How is the application running if it's not running here? That's interesting. Do I want to let, yep. So this is just asking if it wants to let me, uh, if I want to let it view this screenshot and I say yes. So while we do that, found the issue server logs, I can see this transcribe endpoint is returning a 500 error. It knows generally why this is happening. So we're up trying to upload to SUP base storage. So if we go over to SUP base, uh, I see we have like a bucket here and a bucket like an S3 bucket, but just in SUP base. And these are the interview audio and do, 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 let's refresh this page. And we should see files here. And if not, then there's some kind of issue with like the permissions or something like that. Uh, so cool, this is like me as a user probably. And these are the files. So. Cool, so that's working. So the files are coming over, that's that's encouraging. Let's go back to cursor. Uh, you have two options, allow the public URLs to work, root cause of subpage storage unit is not configured to be public. So the public URL doesn't, we don't want, hmm, the transcription is failing because the audio file at the stop again, transcription API. Yeah, I want to use option two because people are going to be talking about sensitive stuff on here and I don't want these to be publicly available. Uh, so let's go with option two. Cool. Okay, so while this is working, I want to show you the front end agent that we uh, are working on creating and how we're going to go about this. So uh, in Claude, just regular Claude, I have a pretty long chat here. Uh, that has all of the architecture and the roadmap and the context of this project. And this is in a Claude project. And what I asked it is to create a front end design system for us. Uh, so create a comprehensive front end design style guide that can be used in Claude code along with Playwright MCP. The goal of this to be give Playwright and Claude code a definition of how we build product and what it looks like. Uh, and so it created this big old huge thing over here. So this is cool. Uh, so what we want to do is copy this. Uh, let's just download it. Again, I'm sure y'all are like super cringe because that's just not, <laughs> that's not how things are done around here. Uh, and we're going to upload this to the design folder. So let's get our finder window here. <laughs> and we have this. Okay, so now with this, and so this is like the definition. This is the reference, like an encyclopedia or a dictionary. Playwright is going to be the thing that gives Claude Code eyes, it's going to virtually spin up, not virtually, it's going to actually spin up a new browser window and play around and click and type and do things like that. And we're going to create an agent to orchestrate between those two. So that's what we're going to do here in just a few seconds. Meanwhile, Claude is done fixing, I've upload, updated this function to use signed URLs instead of public URLs. Now change the, now uses this with a one hour expiration that creates do, 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 do. Cool. Okay. So it's saying this works. One thing that's really cool about working in Next.js is like you don't have to refresh the application or anything like that. It just kind of does it automatically. So we're going to do a new interview Come over here, or we're going to talk. Okay, so one of the things that I want to make sure this works is to not have to worry about browser permissions and stuff like that, but I think I'm just going to have to do that anyhow. Okay, transcribing audio. Ho, oh, oh, ho, let's go. All right, so cool. Okay, so this works, that's awesome. Uh, one thing is like, we don't have state down here. It's not like telling me that it's working or anything like that. Uh, okay, that's so cool. One thing we need to do is 
make sure that there is state and kind of a status indicator on the talk or stop button and the time is not displaying properly. Okay, so this works, that's awesome. Uh, okay, so I did that just so I can talk and do this and then come back over here. So I just wanted to give that, just because like when you're recording here, it should give you the time uh, and it should be some indication that you're actually talking. Um, so we'll see what it comes up with. Uh, okay, cool. So once that's done, we're gonna add this to Git and GitHub as, as a commit, just that we fix this bug. And then we're gonna create the front end agent. So we have these slash commands here, but we don't have any agents. Uh, and so the difference again, as I view them are commands or things I run manually, agents are things I can invoke whenever, and other agents can maybe invoke other agents. Uh, so we're gonna create a front end design uh, and development agent to use Playwright and the style guide that we created here to optimize the front end. Okay, so we're gonna, once it finishes with this, we will create that agent and have it go forth and conquer the front end. Cool, great, so that's done. So I think we're at a place here we wanna commit some of this code. Okay, so that's done. So again, get is just like a check-in. So if you break something going forward, you always know you can come back to this area. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, so now we have this design guide. So let's go back to our Claude code and say, I want to create a front-end design and development agent here in Claude code. This agent would have access to Playwright MCP and the design guide that I placed in the design folder in the Claude main folder. Create an agent for me using a robust system prompt that would have the best practices of an excellent front-end developer. Okay, so let's see what it does and if it's able to create this agent just based on what we did and if it can find this design system. Cool, okay, so it found the design guide. That's cool. Components, layouts, all this kind of stuff, cool. Uh, okay, so we'll see. So it should place not under commands, but it should create a new area uh, in here with agents. And then we just invoke the agent and say, hey, go take a look at the front end and clean some stuff up. Because if you notice like this doesn't, oh, this does have um, navigation, but like this doesn't, and that's wrong, right? And we need like a navigation area and stuff like that. So we'll see what it comes up with here for creating uh, a front end design agent or development agent. And then we'll invoke that and let it run. Create it in the dash dot Claude directory. Great. Writing comprehensive system prompt with best practices. Cool. Okay. So, you know, I think this is just yet another example of like give it really good context, which is the design style guide. This is going to be really important to the agent actually implementing things like we want it to. And then we'll create the agent here or Claude code. We'll create the agent for us here. And we will uh, use the Playwright MCP, which do 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 do. I know it's here, but I don't know where it lives. Uh, Playwright as an MCP to be able to see the front end. And we'll run that here in just a second. So I think I can say like MCP. Okay, so creating front end design, it's gonna do this and it'll just take a few seconds. You know, while we're waiting, coincidentally, I ran into my limit, my token limits in Claude on just the $20 a month plan the last two days, but I spent quite a bit of time working and planning and thinking. So I'm gonna have to be a little more cautious of how I use Claude code and token usage and things like that, but I might just bump it up to the $100 a month plan. Cool, do you wanna create the front end designer? Cool, okay, so now we have the agents area and we have the front end designer. Front end designer and developer, blah, 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 pray our MCP, file our operations, design system components later, yes, link berry, primary colors, okay, awesome. Okay, so this is gonna be done in just a second. And then we'll just verify that we have Playwright MCP installed. If not, we can just, if you don't have checked out Playwright MCP, you can go to just Google for it and the link is here. It's in GitHub, it's managed owned by Microsoft and they have instructions here on how to install it. I think we already have it installed, uh, but we'll just see. Okay, so the agent is ready, that's cool. Uh, so now let's just type in Claude code MCP and it should pull up a list of MCP servers, cool. Okay, so Playwright uh, is connected. 
Okay, cool. And if you hit enter again, you can see the tools that it has available to it. But I messed that up somehow. Okay, cool. So now we can say at front end design agent, front end designer to invoke the agent. Use the resources available to you, which include but are not limited to the Playwright MCP and the design system guide in the design folder to audit the front end design and look of the application and make any changes you feel necessary. One thing in particular I noticed is that there is not consistent uh, header navigation across the entire application, but be thorough in how you review, uh, analyze, and update the front end look of the dashboard and the application. I probably didn't need to give it that much of a prompt, but uh, because it has the system prompt, which is really robust, hopefully. Okay, so this is running and it's gonna do its thing and we'll see in just a second when it spins up Playwright, a whole new browser window will just pop up and you'll see the application doing its thing. Playwright, do you wanna do this? Yes, and I want you to be on autopilot. So it's gonna pull up Playwright and start just doing stuff around the application and then you're gonna see it updating things and working its magic. And just like, just like I planned it, here is the browser window that it just popped up automatically. This is not magic, this is just <laughs> this is just the internet. And you can see it has the dashboard main page here. It's going to go to different URLs. So you can see it's at the local host here um, and it's navigating to the dashboard page and it's doing its thing, okay? So this is where we are. Application, the bulk of the like actual application is done. We need to do like a uh, profile and settings area, and we need to do billing, which I'll do in the working session. So if you want to join me in the working session today, the link is in the description below. We'd love to have you. I'm Craig Hewitt. This is 100 Days of AI. Hope you're enjoying. If you are, please drop a comment in below and tell me what you like or don't like about this. Uh, got a comment from somebody, actually an email saying, hey, do you have like a community where we can come and talk about this stuff? I've thought about that, but I haven't pulled the trigger because I know community is really hard. If you're interested in a community, let me know. Drop a comment below and with a uh, community, the, the word community, and we'll spin something up so we can all have a chat. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.